The first pro with the Maverick is of course the price point. Initially when it first came out, when they first announced it, it started at like $19,999. They have upped the price a little bit now, so it's more so starting at around $21,000, but that is still a very affordable price point and rare to see in today's day and age where the average selling price of a new car is around forty-five to fifty thousand dollars in the United States, which is just asinine. So I really appreciate Ford for building a affordable vehicle that is useful to families, to homeowners. It's an intelligently designed utilitarian automobile. Now, one of the cons is going to be, I guess, with the pricing structure. So I like the starting price, but if you want some of the niceties that makes the Maverick what it is you do have to jump up in price to the point where the XLT model that I recommend most people is going to end up being around $28,000. All things considered still isn't terrible, but it's pretty far off from $20,000, $21,000, right? They could have done little things like make the Ford Co-Pilot safety features with the blind spot monitoring, the lane departure alert. They could have made all of that standard for the XLT and then made it an option on the XL at least. But here with the XLT, you still have to pay up. It's like 600 bucks. And I don't like how if you want to get the all-wheel drive, it is very expensive. The EcoBoost engine is already around a $500 option on top of the, the hybrid. But then if you want to get all-wheel drive, that's going to be an extra $2,600. So as you can see, that's what really makes the price creep up with the Maverick. But then we go back to the pros, which are the engine options. I like how the base engine option is a hybrid. The hybrid power plant will get 42 MPG in the city and 33 MPG on the highways. You combine that with the relatively affordable price point of the Maverick and then you get the excellent fuel economy of the hybrid that really brings your monthly costs down a lot. If you want to get this turbocharged four cylinder, get it because it is very quick. It produces 250 horsepower, 277 pounds feet of torque. Here's one of the cons with the way they have structured this. You have to get this turbocharged four cylinder if you want to get that all wheel drive. So I already mentioned that with the pricing structure, I'm not a huge fan of it really adds on a lot to the price of this Maverick when you opt for a turbo all wheel drive model. I would still go with that 191 horsepower, 155 pounds feet of torque hybrid to get the amazing fuel economy. I really appreciate that. It really just makes sense for many families. The next pro is gonna be with this interior space. Yes, it is a predominantly plastic interior, completely plastic interior space, but it has so much character and charisma and it's so intelligently designed. There are plenty of cubby spaces, the wireless charging pad actually works, unlike the Lexus and unlike the Genesis models. This wireless charging pad works even with the case on. There's other cubby spaces to put your phone up vertically, cup holders, the center armrest actually has a lot of space inside of it. Door pockets are somewhat useless, but regardless of that, I like the kind of diamond etched design in the plastic. It's really awesome. And some of these exposed bolts for the door handle, it is very cool. I really like that. We also have one touch up and down windows for all four windows, but it's the color schemes, the blues, the light blue. For this price point, it doesn't feel like a tin can. This feels like a high effort product because it is. You can tell when you sit inside of this, Ford definitely put a lot of thought and time into designing this Maverick. It wasn't just slapped together overnight. I appreciate the physical buttons, the knobs, the switches, the infotainment is of course easy to use in typical uh, Ford fashion. Gauges are easy to see. Seating position is fantastic. And the other thing I like about this interior, even though this is kind of the most petite truck that you can buy, it's obviously the smallest truck available in the United States, right? It doesn't feel it when you sit inside of it. It feels very wide inside and it feels wide when you drive it out of the road. At least it gives you that impression. You feel like you're in a vehicle that's bigger than what it really is. And I think in this class, that's a good thing. But the bigger vehicles, you know, F-150s, Expeditions, that size of vehicle, I like it when those large vehicles feel small. But here it's the opposite. The small vehicle feels large to drive, and I think that's brilliant. And the space is another pro. You know, I'm 5'11", and there's plenty of headroom space up in the front. Legroom is not an issue. Even in the rear, because of the way they have the front seats mounted, they have mounted the front seats 
up a little bit higher so you have plenty of space for your toes to stow underneath these front seats when you sit in the back. That gives you an extra like three inches of legroom space. If you're under six feet tall, you can really kind of stretch out back there because of that. And the seats are extremely comfortable as well. Now a con with this interior space is gonna be of course the creaks and rattles I get around the door panels because again it's a plastic interior it's just kind of a byproduct I forgive it because it doesn't feel like a tin can but it is something I noticed it doesn't detract from my experience this is a press car with 13,800 miles so it's been used and abused regardless of that the overall interior space does feel rather solid another con is going to be with the Bang & Olufsen sound system it's not really a pro or a con it's just the Bang & Olufsen it's mostly just a name it sounds very mediocre the sound that comes out of these speakers it's not really appropriate for the bang and all in nameplate i would definitely skip the lariat and skip getting this audio system it's really not necessary the regular xlt like i mentioned is going to be more than enough for most people another pro is going to be with the flex bed the four and a half foot bed that we have with this ford maverick again intelligently designed when you get the luxury package with the XLT you get a 400 watt a house outlet in the bed so you can plug in some some power tools or some other electronic devices in there I think the tailgate itself can support up to like 500 pounds of weight so you can have two adults sit on it if you want to they made some pre-wiring holes like 12 volt wiring <laughs> so you can I don't know power something I don't know it's very interesting apparently in their research they found out people were taking wires from the taillights and doing something with it so they just gave you some wires to I don't, I don't even know what the hell you do with that but you have it there and there's a, a bed liner that you get with the luxury package with the XLT and you know that's the reason why the XLT I chose came out to be $28,000 because I added the co-pilot assistance package and the luxury package for $2,500 because that luxury package gives you a lot of the things in the bed like the 400 watt outlet the rails on the side so you can strap things the bed liner etc now because we have the lariat first edition the first edition is going to give you that soft toe new cover but you can just buy your own aftermarket toe new cover it's totally fine but it's a nice size bed and i think you can load up a atv back there if you want to the payload capacity is 1500 pounds the towing capacity is 4000 pounds if you get the turbocharged four cylinder maverick with the tow package then then it can tow 4000 pounds otherwise it can only tow 2000 pounds with the hybrid and with the non tow package ecoboost turbo but it's more than enough capable for most families or or, or homeowners ford claims you can put 37 40 pound bags of mulch in the bed of this maverick so i mean yeah that's overkill for most families you only need like five or six bags of mulch for for most gardening purposes around most houses they really maximize the the square footage if you will of the maverick you know every inch of this is intelligently designed every nook and cranny and crevice you have space you have cubbies the bed is great even though it's only four and a half feet and here's another pro with most ford products they are typically very safe. The Bronco Sport is a IIHS top safety pick and that's what this Maverick is based upon. So we can assume this Maverick is also gonna be a pretty safe vehicle in a crash test as well. More pros, I mean, the driving is what really impressed me with this. It handles great, it rides great. We have your 17 inch wheels wrapped in 235 wide all-terrain tires and they are great in terms of its handling. Even the refinement, sure you get a slight tire hum at the higher speeds, but it's really not that bad. I was driving this in the rain trying to lose control on purpose and it just wouldn't. It, this Maverick really sticks to the road extremely well. Now keep in mind, this is the fully loaded all-wheel drive. When you get a all-wheel drive Maverick like you see here, you get an upgraded multi-link rear suspension. Whereas the front wheel drive variants, they will come with a torsion beam or a twist beam rear suspension maybe those torsion beam mavericks will ride a little bit stiffer might not handle quite as well but i don't think it's going to be that far apart honestly so overall the suspension setup the handling demeanor is excellent the maverick doesn't feel like it's going to flip over onto itself you're not getting car sick when you ride in it i had many people in here they enjoyed riding in it everybody thought it was comfortable and it's even reasonably refined there's not too much wind noise or tire noise around town it's mostly when you just get it out on the highway speeds and even then it's not that bad overall i would definitely recommend the maverick and if you're looking to save some money on it i know most dealerships are charging over msrp but i have partnered with a company known as lease companion 
they can help you get 5% off MSRP on a new Maverick build. But keep in mind, you have to build it, you have to wait for it to be built, which can take several months. That's why they are able to offer you that 5% discount. They are located in Washington, DC, so you do have to pick it up or have it shipped, and you do have to pay a broker fee of around $500. But if you do sign up with my link, you can get that broker fee reduced to $450. So if you want to sign up with my link, all of the information will be linked down in the description box. Thanks again for watching this video. The next video will be on the end screen here and I will see you there.